This podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial by simply going to audibletrial.com forward slash TSE. Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, or even your MP3 player. Simply go to audibletrial.com forward slash TSE. Tell me your boy Donald sent you. Sales from the street. What? What? Sales from the street. We up in here. Sales from the street. Sales, 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 sales from the street. You're going to love this one. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And we're going to talk today about the idea of account-based selling. I have a great guest coming on the show today. His name is Brandon Redlinger. He's going to give us some insights today, talk specifically about a challenge that they had around the idea of account-based selling, what they did to overcome that, and some of the results they're seeing right now. It's going to be fun. But before we dive into all that fun stuff, you know a brother got to give some shout-outs, right? I want to give a huge shout-out to Cheryl Pollins. Thanks for connecting on Twitter. Also want to give a huge shout out to Justin Barclay. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for connecting and keep being awesome with your podcast, man. Also, Louis Greenberg, thanks so much for connecting with me, man. I wish you great success. Al Robinson, thank you also for connecting. And Jasmir Jones, thank you so much for connecting. If you'd like to connect with me on Twitter like these fine folks, you can find me at Donald C. Kelly. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly. You can also connect with me on Instagram, Donald C. Kelly. On Facebook, we have a Facebook group called the Sales Evangelizers, and that's where other sellers like yourself, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, they come together, they ask questions, they answer questions, share insights, and just help each other to learn and to grow. It's our community, the Sales Evangelizers. Shh, don't tell anybody about it. I'm just kidding. It's a private group, but feel free to share it with anyone you know who are in sales or who's selling or just need to get connected with a like-minded group of people. Check it out, the Sales Evangelizers. We have a community on LinkedIn and also on Facebook. We have this phenomenal episode with Brandon, so I won't take up much more time. We're going to go ahead and dive straight into it. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Thank you so much for having me, Donald. Really excited. Been a fan of the podcast, and uh, I know we had you on my podcast recently, so I'm excited to kind of flip the script a little bit. Dude, I'm stoked. And with this episode, as I shared in a teaser, Sales from the Street is where we bring on a sales rep, individual, someone working in the industry who can tell us a particular challenge that they had or their organization, talk about how they overcame that challenge, like what they did, what they put in place, and then some of the results that came from it. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy, but we all know that we can learn from each other. So I want to learn from you today. So let's go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit more before we dive into that part about you and what you do, Brandon. Yeah, so I am on the team over at Persist IQ heading up the growth side of things. And for SysTech, we are an outbound sales platform that helps reps be more effective by helping them focus on the most important activities. And, you know, sometimes people bucket us in the sales automation camp. And though technically we do help with automating daily workflows, like emailing, calling, social selling, sending handwritten cards, et cetera, we're kind of against sales automation. And what I mean by that (laughs) is... (laughs) You know, people love to just automate, automate, automate. And it gets to the point where you're actually automating the human element out of sales, right? So we know that the best sales reps out there, what they're really good at is building that human relationship. So we're helping sales reps find that balance while automating the things that should be automated, like integrating with your CRM, the reminders and tracking of a lead or a, a contact or an account. But then we're bringing that human element back to the actual communication side of things. We all face challenges. And uh, we were talking earlier about one particular challenge you guys were uh, having was around the idea of account-based selling or selling with accounts. Why don't you bring that up? You can explain it better than I can, the challenge that you guys had and what some of the things you guys did to put in place and the result you saw. Yeah, absolutely. So account-based sales, account-based sales development, whatever you want to call it these days, it's it's kind of the hot new thing. and (laughs) and. Probably early on last year, we were actually kind of playing around with it, dipping our toe in the water a little bit and seeing how it is. Like before it really exploded, it kind of exploded in the middle, later part of last year, 2015. And so we were kind of early on in the movement. And the idea of being really selling to selling at the account level rather than selling at the individual lead or contact level. Some people call it persona-based selling, 
But we're on the other side of that where you're actually targeting these big accounts that will make a huge difference in your bottom line, spending a lot more time, energy, resources, breaking into those accounts and then closing them. So, you know, it's a lot more of a strategic approach and it's a lot more time and energy and done right. You know, it makes a big difference in your bottom line. So the, the challenge that we were having essentially was, you know, this is a new idea. This is a new concept that's out there. We were kind of, uh, we stumbled on a little earlier. It just made total sense. If we're going after these big accounts, we can spend a lot more time, a lot more energy doing things like researching them, connecting with them on social, connecting with them different through all these different channels rather than just a, a spray and pray approach, right? It was new. Not a lot of people out there were doing it yet. There's still a not, not a huge amount of resources and places where you can go learn about account-based sales. So one of the things that we did to help us learn it is just fully dive into it, right? Go talk to other people out there. I, I love what you talked about in one of your other episodes of like the mastermind, right? I'm a huge fan of the mastermind. Mm -hmm. Going out there, talking to other sales leaders who are taking this same approach, figuring out what they're doing, sharing stories, swapping ideas, and then going and implementing it. And, you know, fortunately for us, you know, the technology, the software that we built actually is perfectly in line with account-based sales development. So when you're reaching out to prospects, you make sure that you're not, that someone else on your team hasn't already reached out to them, that they're not already in a campaign. You can see what emails they've opened, what content they're connecting with, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's really this more strategic approach. And then once you get the strategy that you can add the tools, add the technology to really help you get there. I think a lot of times people are just so focused on the technology. What's the coolest, newest thing out there? Whereas I think that's actually kind of backwards, right? A sale isn't made based on the tools that you use. A sale is made possible through the process that the rep uses. And the tools just kind of make that possible. We went out there, we talked with a lot of the other leaders that are going through account-based sales, or some people were still calling it account-based marketing. You know, I, I think the, the latest term these days, Craig Rosenberger over at Topo is calling it account-based everything. I'm, I'm not a big <laughs> fan of that, that term, Th though it is true, right? You know, account-based is more a strategy rather than a specific approach. And that strategy needs to be aligned throughout the entire organization. So it's, it's marketing, it's customer success, it's account management all need to be on the same page and bought into the account-based approach, but not, not a fan of the, the name. But I love what Craig is doing over at Topo. You guys should definitely check out Craig and, and Topo, and they got a great blog as well over there. There are a few steps when you're really getting started in account-based, this account-based approach, we'll call it. And you know the, the first is actually just kind of making sure that account-based is the right approach for your organization. I know a lot of people again, kind of have that shiny object syndrome. It's, this is the new hottest thing out there, so we got to go do it. Whereas account base is not actually for everyone. If your ACV is small, your contract sizes are small, and you can't afford to spend as much time with an account, you know, spend as much time doing that research, following up, connecting with prospects, doing those field, those field visits, those sorts of things, it can actually hurt your business. It can slow you down a lot. So. You know, there really is no magic number out there. I, I know Trish Bertuzzi, I'm a big fan of Trish Bertuzzi. Her, she says your ACV should be at least 50000 or more to get started on an account-based approach. Though I generally, I agree with that. But there are some cases where that you could probably go a little bit lower. But anyway, just like making sure that one, account-based makes sense for your business and your economics, right? So the second one would be then kind of what we touched on earlier is getting buy-in from the entire organization. You know, if sales is gung-ho on an account-based approach, but, you know, marketing is still targeting individual leads, then you won't have a machine that, you know, you can't really get that flywheel cranking and get the accounts that you are targeting up and running as quickly as if you got the entire organization on board. So after you get the organization on board, it's finding, it's building your target accounts and those target accounts being, you know, what, what are taking a look at your current customer base and 
those accounts, the biggest accounts that you have, what are those things in common, such as, you know, maybe they all are the same company size, maybe they're on the same industry, maybe it's, you know, company maturity, industry maturity, total addressable market revenue, what, you know, whatever it is, really defining that account, and then kind of drilling down from there. You know, they say complex sales these days have 5.4 buyers. Research from CEB shows that, you know, complex sales have multiple decision makers. So it's going out and building out a persona for each of those decision makers. And you have a different message, a different value proposition for each one of those people. So, you know, for us, it's not just the, you know, the VP of sales that's buying our software. It's, you know, a lot of times, most of the time, procurement is involved, sales ops is involved, marketing often gets involved, the CEO gets involved. So we have to build out all these different target personas that we can then start reaching out to those people. So after we build out those personas, we drop them into our campaigns, you know, call it a campaign, call it workflow, call it sequence. I don't know if there's an agreed upon term out there these days for it, but essentially it's, you know, you're calling, you're emailing, you're social selling, you're, you know, sending gift baskets, sending wine, sending whatever it is, right? Over a certain amount of time at a specific cadence. And then really working those accounts until they close, right? So all these all of these accounts that you're reaching out to, that you're prospecting, are pre-qualified. You know that they'd be a good fit for you and your company and your your service. And then it's a matter of going after them and closing them. So you have a longer deal cycle. But again, it's going to pay off in the end in terms of bottom line revenue. Awesome, man. And you guys have been seeing some effectiveness with this, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think the effectiveness really comes when kind of what we've been talking about is bringing the human element back to sales. So if I can afford to spend more time doing research, connecting with people, going to events, seeing them in person, just bringing that human element back to sales then I'm able to break into these larger accounts a little bit easier, penetrate that account, you know, land it and expand it and, and close some deals. So we've been seeing some great results with this. Awesome, dude. I mean, it makes total sense. And I think this is like one of the things you mentioned I thought was very, very interesting was you got to make sure it's right for your business, first of all. And then you got to make sure you have a process and not just jump out and do something. Got to have a process in place. And from the what you, what you shared there, I mean, it, it total, totally makes sense. And I think there's a lot of individuals listening to this episode that can say, you know, we can try some of these things in our business and we can see if it works for us effectively. And if there's one major takeaway you want someone to leave this episode with, what's that one piece of advice? I would, I think that's kind of it right there is make sure that targeted account selling is right for you and your business. Because if you if you invest in targeted account selling, you don't have everyone on board or your average contract size isn't there and you invest in, in account-based sales development, you could be wasting a lot of time, energy, and resources. And it can really set your business back. So before you dive into account-based sales, account-based sales development, account-based whatever, make sure it's economically right for your business. Gotcha, man. Well, if folks out there want to get in touch with you and learn more about you and and this concept, what's the best way for them to do so? Yeah, you can reach me directly, Brandon at PersistIQ.com. You can check out, we we write a lot about this stuff on our blog, PersistIQ.com slash blog, or follow us on Twitter. It's just at PersistIQ. Sweet, man. Well, Brandon, dude, we thank you guys so much for coming on the show today and sharing this insight with us. It's definitely interesting. And I hope that we are able to at least, you know, help one person today to be able to take some a concept and apply it to their business and see improvements. And, and uh, maybe they can continue learning the conversation on at your blog. So we'll pass yeah. them on that way, man. Yeah, thanks a lot, Donald. I had a lot of fun. And I love geeking out about this stuff. So if anyone has any questions or just wants to chat, definitely hit me up. we Will do, man. Thanks, brother. Thanks. <laughs> Told you this stuff was going to be good. This is an interesting topic, and I highly recommend that you go and look it up if you don't know much about the idea of account-based selling. You can go to our website, thesalesevangelist.com forward slash the word episode 334. You can get connected with Brandon. You can learn more about him and his company and what they're doing and how they're implementing this process in their organization. Or you can always just go ahead and Google it to learn more. But go ahead and find an expert like Brandon. He can share with you the thoughts and insights, what they're doing, and how it's improving their sales. 
All in all, I do this because I want you to be successful. I want you to be happy. But most importantly, I want you to go out and do big things. (laughs) 